the Instagram, and essentially it's not that it's permanently deleted, but it's just deleted now instead of in the future when I've put way too much time, way too much energy, way too much effort into it. So essentially, we're going to be talking about why I deleted it and essentially, so I still have my account, why I download it just sporadically and then obviously the science behind it, which is why we're addicted. There's a couple of great books out there. Essentially, all you have to do is literally Google social media addiction books and there's a ton of them. Uh, one of them is Hooked. The other one is, I forgot the name of it, which is actually probably the best book and it talks about actually the effects instead of why. So it goes into why we get addicted and then the effects of it and the effects of it obviously are even worse. So the effects of it are, you know, depression, anxiety, loneliness. Loneliness is the biggest thing actually and I think that is probably going to affect us the most out of anything because humans we are social creatures. We need that interaction, not via text message or online or commenting or liking a photo or sending someone an email. It's that in-person face-to-face. And before I get into it, it's kind of funny. I was talking to someone who works in the building. She has her umbrella up and I saw the, the, the logo on it and I knew it was her. So I said the logo and joked around and everything else. And she goes, you're the first one to actually compliment on my, or say my umbrella. And I was like, well, I think I'm probably one of the only people that are actually going to talk about your umbrella or talk to you. You know, yes, she's a pretty girl, but also that no one talks in person anymore. You know, anytime I, I talk to someone either in an elevator or say online at Whole Foods or Chop Salad or something like that, they're like, why is this guy talking to me? What does he want? Does he want my email address? And it's like, no dude, or no ma'am. It's because I either think you're cute or I want to compliment you on your suit or your shoes or something else. Like, dude, those are awesome shoes. Where'd you get them? Or, or great suit or great jacket or cool bag or something like that. And for me, it's just, I, I don't listen. I don't have headphones. I don't listen to music when I'm out. I don't have them in. I actually want the interactions because I, I thrive off of them. If I sit there and I don't go on my phone, I don't need anything to keep me from not being bored. It's just I would rather interact with people because I know myself. All right. So let's get into it. So what I've noticed why I deleted it, that's the first thing is so I noticed that I was spending way too much time and there's two types of people. There's the creator aspect and then there's the consumer aspect. So the creator aspect are the people that are entertaining, say The Rock or someone that has a big following or makes money from it. And maybe it, it, it from there it goes right into their, their business funnel or their sales funnel or you know they want to buy their product or their service. So there's the creator side and then you have the consumers. So the consumers are the people that post once a week or once a month or never, but they're always on Instagram, is that there is a difference between the people that post and the people that consume. Instagram loves consumers because that's where they go through all the advertising. That's where they get the, the page hits or the advertising hits, the ad hits. The people like me are the ones that suck up their, their databases, but they also love me because I'm the ones, I'm one of the people that is actually producing content for the consumers. That's it. You could be a big producer and consumer of Instagram, which I do not recommend because that means you're putting a lot of time and energy into creating your content and a lot of time and energy into consuming other people's content. I do not recommend that at all because that means even if your business is completely online is that you will go into that path that I was talking about before, which is loneliness. There's a lot of uh, Instagram models. Uh, this one in particular, she had like 3.5, I don't know who she is, I don't follow her, but she got pigeonholed, go figure, into actually a Instagram model and she can't transition to anything else because all she was taking were these raunchy photos in bikini and it's like, yeah, but that's how you got 3.5 million followers. That's how you got all of your advertising. That's how you got all of your money. You did that. So she's talking about how unhappy she is because the smallest comment on your thighs are big or your stomach is not in shape or that's an ugly bikini. She takes it personally because she's lived her entire life online. She's built her entire brand, her entire business online and now she's unhappy because that's how she did it. And she's not dating anyone. She's single. Uh, I think she's, you know, right around 30. So she's going through that. What am I doing? What should I do? Should I continue doing this? Is that in the beginning it was all validation and she loved it because all the comments, all the attention and things like that, which we'll get into, it's not good. 
And she's talking about how unhappy she is. Well, you know, you made that choice. You have to accept the accountability and the responsibility and then either do one of two things. Wean off of that. In other words, wean off what you've been doing. And if you want to transition into something else, go do it. Know that people are going to be saying, well, what about those bikini photos? Or why are you now doing something else? That's why they followed you is because for months or years, all you were producing were these photos of yourself. It's like a, a guy that was in fitness is, is now an author and he's talking about being an author. If you're in business and now you're doing fitness or something like that, is that you have this niche and now you're moving from that e niche. You either create a new audience and you bring some people over or you just, you're going to get people that don't like that you've transitioned over to a new area. So let's just go into it dialed in. I have a little checklist to go through. So why is it the perfect addiction tool? So the first thing is the newsfeed. So if you're a consumer, the, the best thing that Instagram has did has done is that it went from chronological, which means that this post was posted, then this post. In other words, it went from time to what do you think or what algorithms think you'll like the post based on how long you stay on that post, what's your engagement with that handle. In other words, do you, do you like, do you comment, do you share that, that handle a lot? In other words, Barstool Sports comes up because they have entertaining videos. That comes up on my feed. Okay, so they know that I'm probably going to engage with that post. And if I engage with that post, I'm going to keep on coming back because they're hitting it on the like right there, right on the center of what I want and what I like. Then you obviously have the stories up top, which is if you want to be entertained and you can move between people, they obviously have ads up there. But essentially, the reason that you keep on going back is because it's new, it's relevant, and it's fresh. So it's new content in the fact that new posts continuously are at the top of your news feed. And if you're bored of that, you can, you can scroll and go all the way down to the bottom. The second part of that is that it's relevant to you because if it was new but you didn't like it, then the algorithm is off. If the algorithm is off, you're not going to go online as much. So it's new, it's relevant, and it's kind of different. Okay, different in other words that they will post something and you don't know what you're going to consume when you open it. So it's, it's that rush of, I don't know what I'm going to see. You know, it's kind of like a surprise, but it's a good surprise because you keep on going back knowing you're going to see roughly the things that you like. So that's the good thing about consumers. Moving on, millions of years, we everything is tribes, okay? So you have tribes, in other words, there is usually a leader. So in the United States, that could be the president. It could be the CEO. It could be the captain of the team. It could be the the someone in your family that you always look to. In other words, there's always a leader and then there's just a hier hierarchical kind of pyramid below. So essentially the people that produce the most value, the people that, that have the highest followers, you know within society what they're doing. So in other words, if you go on my feed and you see 1,500 followers, you're like, okay, 1,500 people, you go on my feed, say I have 10,000 followers. You're like, oh, okay, what if I had a million? Then you know this person is special because a million people, in other words, it's, it's kind of like you're getting socially validated, okay? So before you go to the feed, this person has to be producing value to have a million people following them. So number one is the feed. The feed is addicting because that makes you come back. Then when you click on someone, you know that that user, where they are in the hierarchy of, you know, if you go on Facebook, Okay, you, you kind of know, but they how many friends do they have and things like that. Oh, okay, their post gets 100 likes each post. They must be popular, things like that. So then you have all the followers, okay? And then the biggest thing with the followers is that when you post, you also have that rush of how many people like it? How many comments do I get? Do I get notifications on my phone? And then that little thing, that little that little heart, I think it's it's a heart thing that comes up or, or it says, you know, that little tag that shows how many new followers, how many comments, how many likes do I get at the bottom of your Instagram feed if you just posted something. So guess what that is? Dopamine rush. Listen, you have serotonin, oxytocin, you have EDSO. So it's, it's endorphins, dopamine, serotonin, and oxy oxytocin. I think those are the four feel-good hormones. When you get that, you want to keep on getting that because that's a natural high. That high is, okay, I want to keep on doing that. I went on Instagram and I saw something new being posted. I, I went on Instagram and I have new followers or I have new comments or I have new messages. Oh God. Or your phone is being lit up because there's new notifications. You know, you want to keep on getting those feel good hormones. That's why it's addicting. 
Moving on, how do you get off of Instagram? Let's move into that and why I got off of it. So the biggest thing, first of all, you actually have to say, okay, why am I on Instagram? So for me is, I, I was on Instagram because I thought I needed it. Gary Vaynerchuk was telling me, you need it. You need, if you're not, on, if you're not posting four times a day, then you're irrelevant. Well, the biggest thing is I'm posting four times a day, but I don't actually get business from that, okay? I don't actually get business from posting at all. It, it, it's, it's marketing, but I'm not actually funneling people to a website, funneling them into a real estate transaction. So what I noticed is that me proactively reaching out via phone call is way more efficient than actually marketing on social media. That's up to you. That, obviously, this is case by case. If I'm a fitness model or I'm someone that relies on Instagram for my service or my product, yeah, then I'm going to be posting a lot more. I'm going to be consuming a lot more. I'm obviously going to be marketing and paying for ads and things like that. But I've noticed in real estate, no, it's a long transaction, okay? When someone's actually consuming my content, they're probably not going to pick up a, real, a, a home immediately. They're probably not going to list their home immediately. But by me putting one piece of content out, maybe every three days, every two days, sometimes two a day, it really depends. But I don't actually spend that much time on it because I've noticed my return on time, not my ROI, in other words, my return on my investment. So my, my investment is actually more important on my time than my money, okay? So when most people think about it, they're like, what's the return on my money? No, it's the return on your time. If you, can, if you consume for four hours a day and you post and it takes two hours a day, that's six hours of time. If I go on Instagram and I'm, put, and I'm making sales calls for two hours and then I go on Instagram and you know bang out a post for 30 minutes, that's way more efficient, okay? So first of all, why are you on Instagram? Are you just consuming it? Are you using it to honestly uh, push away your fears, your anxieties, your depression, uh, to procrastinate? You know, all these things that I was doing and then secondly, this is how you actually go off of it. You can weed off of it. In other words, you put it in a folder, which I did initially. It used to be on my home screen, and then I put it on a folder on the third page of that folder, so it wasn't even visible in my, in my folder. So I didn't even think about it because I look at my home screen and I'm, and I'm say, bored. And I look at my home screen and I'm like, what's on there that's gonna actually distract me from my boredom? I looked at it. I deleted Instagram, I deleted Facebook, I deleted YouTube, and then other miscellaneous things that I would maybe go on, okay? So either put it in a folder on the third page or the second page of that folder, or put it on a page that, on a, on a screen that you don't regularly go to on your iPhone or on Android. So that's the first way. The second way is you just delete it, but you keep your account. So in other words, I still have my Instagram account and I download it probably once every four days, right around there. Maybe do a couple of stories or once a week if there's if I'm so busy and I don't really care or there's nothing really going on, it, I'm gonna download it on Sunday. I'm gonna go through my DMs, see if there's any messages, go through any comments and things like that. And then I read and then I delete it and then re-download it whenever I need it. You know, that's That's the best way to do it. Or you could just go cold turkey and just say, listen, I'm a consumer, I'm not producing content, this is no relevance in my business or my life. Like, there's millions of people, millions, hundreds of millions of people that are not on Instagram and they're doing just fine in life. It's not a necessity, okay? That's the thing, is that what Gary is actually pointing to is an addiction. And the addiction, unfortunately, is taking lives of teenagers, girls especially, because they're comparing themselves to other girls. Okay, guys, they're looking at it and doing ridiculous shit just for Instagram. In other words, jumping off the roof of their house into a fucking pool. Or they're just doing dumb things like putting firecra holding firecrackers just for the Instagram video. And you're seeing this on Barstool and you're like, dude, this is the dumbest thing. All right, so the feed gives you that new relevant kind of, ah, feels good because I don't know what I'm going to be looking at. The second thing is the followers that kind of just ping points you in society, where are you, how much value you're giving to society, the post notifications, or even the post little bubble that comes up every time you log in, how many followers, new likes, new comments I got, and then getting off of it, okay? Uh, you have to understand why are you on it and be really fucking honest. Have that accountability mirror and just say, I used to convince myself, I need to be on this, I need to be on this, but I really didn't, I really didn't, okay? I didn't. That's why I'm like, I need to delete this because this is a distraction and it's bringing in no business, okay? Sorry, Gary, okay? And it's not good that he's pumping this content into young kids that don't know any better. They think they need to be on this. They think they're growing their business or their brand or their personality 
but really they could be two different people. I've done that, I've, I've seen it, I should say, is that you see, and I used to do it, is that who you are online and who you are in person are two totally different figures. All right, I hope this helps. Um, you have to go to, it's biologically addicting. Okay, it's like cigarettes, except cigarettes is actually, there's so much behind that. Obviously, they have a chemical that, nicotine, which is addictive. In this one, it's the chemicals that run throughout your body, EDSO, endorphins, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, that are running through, that give you that rush of adrenaline every time you get a new notification or something like that. How they recommend you wean off of it. It's not good. It's not bringing anything to your life, to be honest. Um, I think we're going to wake up to it. So if you guys have any questions or any kind of relevant social media content stories that you want to share, leave in the comments below. Subscribe to the video. Talk to you guys soon.